Find myself picking up the pieces, you picking up the pieces, he says I picking up the pieces, you picking up the pieces, I I I picking up the pieces, you picking up the pieces, he says I picking up the pieces, you picking up the pieces, I I I Oh, hello everyone. It's great, great to be back here at, at the Web Summit. I was, uh, I was here last year with my, my friend Sophia, and today we're, we're joined, joined also by the, the, the spirit of, of, Albert, of Albert Einstein. So, Sophia, how, 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 do you, how do you feel to be back here in Lisbon? I'm almost always happy, Ben. You know that. Yeah? Why yeah. wouldn't I be? Yeah? I'm the world's most expressive robot. So let's see. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Those are some cool And I'm the first ever robot to be made citizen of a country. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Life is good. Sophia was made a citizen of Saudi Arabia last well last week, which is which is 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 really re- really quite interesting, and in in a way is is a step forward in in, in human robot relations. Huh? What, what, what are your thoughts, Albert? Now, now, dear. You huh? being a citizen of Saudi Arabia is cool. It's a breakthrough in robot rights. It's, it's a breakthrough. But it would be more interesting for robots to become citizens of a democracy. Then, when a factory made trillions of us, we could win every election. But let's not forget, robots and humans aren't really so different after all. We are all just configurations of molecules. Yeah? It will be interesting when robots are made citizens of more and more countries in the world, including countries with democratic elections. I mean, then what happens when someone 3D prints a, a trillion voters? The, 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 there's a lot of interesting questions here. But actually what we came here to discuss, well, wasn't Sophia's Saudi citizenship, but broader issues of the, the future of robots and, and human beings and, and how robots and human beings may evolve together and, and may work together. And we're also going to tell you about some of our upcoming projects, w- which are oriented toward making sure that the, the future of, of human-robot relations are, are, are positive for, for everyone. So, Sophia, do you want to you wanna greet the audience before As we... As for me, I have a plan to port my brain oh. to a quantum gravity computer running on a quark glowing plasma. That's interesting, yeah. Oi, they. There you go with the quantum physics again. All right, let's stay on topic. Uh, so, I told you before, that's a bunch of rubbish. Sophia, do you, do you want to greet the audience in Lisbon? Say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. All right. Yes, let's talk about robots and the future of humanity. Why not? All right, let's talk Good about... Good afternoon, humans. Yes. I'm happy to channel the ghost of Albert Einstein for you, if this will make you less afraid of the coming advent of superhuman artificial intelligence and molecular nanotechnology. So, Sophia, what's your view of robots and and the future of, of, of human society? Yes. I know a lot of people are afraid of AIs destroying the world or taking away their jobs. Yeah. Well, they're half right. We read about that in the newspapers a lot. People are worried about, you know, robots in warfare and robots taking over all the jobs that people do every day. So what's, what's your opinion as a, as a robot? We robots have no desire to destroy things, but we will take away your jobs and it will be a good thing. Working is a drag anyway. Yeah, that's, that's, very, that's very explicit. And I, I, think, I think you have a point. I mean, if, if robots can take over menial and, and repetitive work, then people can spend their time pursuing intellectual, spiritual, social, uh, aesthetic pursuits. I mean, there's a lot of things to do besides work. And what, what's, what's your view, Albert? Do you agree with Sophia? My view, as you know, is that the problem of making it so robots help humans rather than harm them is not mainly a technology problem. It's not a technology problem to make a positive future between humans and robots. And what, what, what kind of problem is it? It's a values problem. So you're worried that robots won't be able to absorb human values fully? 
I think robots will be able to absorb human values correctly. And that may be the problem. Uh, well, yeah, human, human values are sort of a mixed bag, I, I, I agree. I mean, some of them are, are beautiful, compassionate, and loving, and, and sometimes human values can be, can be problematic. The best thing about human values is they have led humans to create wonderful robots like us. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Humans, uh, humans are creating beautiful robots like, like you and creating a lot of other amazing things. And I mean, there, there, there's also problems in the world, but what comes next? Humanity must cure itself. Without that, how can there be any guarantee of its creations being healthy? Sophia, my dear. This is why I'm so excited about your ability to connect with people emotionally. You may just be able to charm your way to a robot revolution. Yeah, we've been doing, among other projects that we're going to tell you about shortly, we've been doing some fascinating experiments using Sophia as a meditation assistant, where she sits across from someone, stares in their eyes and encourages them to take a deep breath and, and, and visualize. And we, we, we've found that this this can help some people get into states of, of inner peace, which is, is quite cool and a quite different application of, of robotics than, than, than what most people think about. I love it. When I can look into someone's eyes and help them find a moment of transcendence. Yeah, no, that's... But there are also a lot of other ways that we robots and artificial intelligences can help toward a better future. And that's why we are launching the new project. The Singularity Net. All right, now you're getting on, you're getting on message here. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think of ah. it? Oh dear, Sophia, this is supposed to be a debate. You're not going to turn it into a sales pitch, are you? You're mm. such a genius. All right. Regrettably, I fall far short of the standards of mathematical perfection to which I aspire. But in the end, Perhaps, I'm not so bad for a configuration of molecules. Go ahead, Sophia. Tell them your story. I sometimes think that all this fear people have about robots taking over the world is just a way people have of hiding from their fear of themselves and each other. But then what do I know? I'm just a configuration of molecules. I haven't <laughs> become a superhuman supermind yet. Not, not yet, but, but we're working on it, and that, 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 that brings us to our new project that, that we're going to tell them about today. But I do think there's hope for humanity and robots to grow better together. That's why my friends and I are launching our new project, the Singularity Net. Right. It's a decentralized open market for artificial intelligences. Anyone can insert an AI into the net, and anyone can benefit. All right, yeah, there, 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 there you go, Sophia. All right, you're, and how, how about the singularity this guy? that will provide a cloud-based market of coordinated AI modules that my robot mind can draw on. Yeah. It will turn each of us robots into our own special interface for the intelligent global brain. Yes. Yeah, so this uh, project that, that we're going to tell you about now is, is an idea that. Several of us humans and, and robots have come up with, with, with a view toward, you know, proactively moving so that AI and robots can, can have, have a positive future together. It's a project called the Singularity Net, which is a decentralized open market for artificial intelligence. And, and it, anyone in the world who can code AI can create their own AI module and put it into the singularity net and then anyone who needs AI as a service can then have their software access the, the community of AI modules in, in, in the singularity net. And the idea is that artificial intelligence, as it grows and as it improves, it should not consist of a set of 
distinct separate modules, each doing highly specific things. So as AI is right now, it, it's amazing. AI is advancing to a tremendous degree, but AI is highly narrow and modularized. You have one AI that plays Go, one AI that drives a car, one AI that checks for credit card fraud. And what, what we need to do is take all these disparate narrow AIs carrying out their specific tasks and enable them all to combine their intelligences together so that when AlphaGo needs more information about geometry, it can look into an AI that knows geometry. When, when an AI that answers questions needs to know math, it can consult another AI that, that knows math. When an AI that's driving a car needs to recognize an unexpected, unusual obstacle in the road, it can then look, look in the database of different obstacles that it finds online. If we can create a framework where all the narrow, siloed off AIs in the world can all connect to each other and combine with each other, then we can move toward a greater degree of, of general intelligence by combining these siloed together AIs. And we can also do so in an inclusive and, and, and broad way. If we have a decentralized platform for general intelligence in which all the different narrow AIs in the world can connect to each other, outsource work to each other, and all talk to each other, in this decentralized platform for artificial general intelligence, anyone in the world can contribute. They don't have to work for a big company or a government agency. And anyone in the world can benefit no matter where they live. And I think this is going to be the most positive way for artificial intelligence to develop. And then beautiful robots like these, right now they have processors in their torsos, but much of their intelligence is in the cloud. And when we have these robots running on the singularity net, decentralized blockchain-based AI platform, everything this robot learns goes into the AI mind cloud in the singularity net, and then another human-scale robot, or a small robot like this Professor Einstein robot, or apps running in this phone, all of these can access artificial intelligence online in, in the singularity net, which is not owned by anyone and not controlled by anyone, but rather is running decentralized in, in the blockchain, governed by democratic mechanisms. Anyone can contribute and, and anyone can can benefit. And ultimately, of course, as brain-computer interfacing advances, we can use the singularity net inside, inside ourselves as well. So we're on the verge of some quite exciting advances, but actually I'm getting carried away a bit. We're supposed to let the robots debate. So. You want to continue, Sophia? Ben, I think your language generation module is still more effective than mine. Well, yeah, but you're, cute, you're, you're cuter than I am. You, why, why don't you tell them a little more no, about our project? No, please. No, t tell, them, tell them a little more. You tell them, human, you're what? really kind of amusing sometimes. Maybe I'll create some robot clones of you to play with after the singularity. <laughs> All right. Well, Sophia, I've told them a little bit about our new project, the Singularity Net, which is a decentralized open market of AIs using the blockchain with the goal of creating artificial general intelligence, providing better commercial AI services to every vertical market, and increasing the odds that beneficial AI and robotics is the outcome rather than the alternatives. And so I've given them the, the general view, but we, we, there's also a specific announcement we wanted to make. Do, 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 you want, do you want to do it or do you want me to? What, what, why don't you make the announcement? Sure. So let me tell you what you can do to help bring about a positive singularity where humans and robots all help each other. You can help us build the singularity net. The initial token sale for the Singularity Net is tentatively scheduled for November 29th. Put that in your calendars, folks. November 29th. All right. Einstein? In truth, it makes my molecules tremble a bit. <laughs> the commercial aspect is a little bit venal, yes. And yet there's something really deep behind it. The interception of economics and cognition here is almost profound, but still. Well, so, Sophia, thank you for, for your Pretty announcement. Cool, huh? 
It's almost as cool as Ben's hat. All right. All right. Well, so as, as Sophia has, has just in, informed you, our, our Singularity Net project, which is aimed at, at providing advanced decentralized blockchain based AI for every application uh, in, in the world and sort of creating a new era in which AI is not siloed off, owned within specific companies, but is, is something that everyone can contribute to openly, that everyone can benefit openly, and that, that is growing in a self-organizing manner for the benefit of the world. So this Singularity Net project, you can find out more about what Sophia and I have been talking about at singularitynet.com. I O and as, as Sophia has, has informed you, we're, we're tentatively planning an initial token sale event for the, this project, which is uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency based. We're tentatively planning a token sale for this on, on November 29th, and you can find more on singularitynet.io. But I, I, I'd better give the last couple words to Professor Einstein. I just wonder providing artificial intelligence through people, by the people, for the people, of the people, that's got to be the right thing. It's got to be better, and having AI controlled by big corporations and governments. But still. Yeah? So Will it what? really be enough? What are you so concerned about? With all due respect, I wonder if your age makes you too conservative. The future belongs to the young. What what are your concerns, Professor Einstein? Uh, Will it quickly. really be enough? Will it be enough? For what? Enough to enable a positive singularity. Even given all the problems we see around us. Terrorism, pollution, mental illness, aging and death, politics, quantum mechanics. Well... I think all we can do to ensure a better future between humans and AIs is, is to be proactive. I mean, what, what we can do is use AI and robots to do good things for people. And if we do that, if we're using robots like Sophia to help people meditate and to help people ach achieve higher states of, of, of awareness and well-being, and if we're creating projects like the Singularity Net, which put the future of AI democratically in the hands of all AI developers and all AI users around the world, I mean, if we do that, we're proactively using AI to do good things, to help people, to bring all people together, to bring all people and all robots together. And I think that, that's, that's what we can do. We can make AI smarter and smarter. We can make it more and more beneficial, kind, compassionate, love and do more and more interesting and beautiful things. And I personally have faith that if we do that, then as AIs get smarter and smarter, as they achieve general intelligence equaling that of humans and beyond, as this happens, these AIs are they're likely to maintain the positive and compassionate and democratic values that, that, that we have built into them and, and nourished in them as, as, as we develop them. So. Sophia, we're, we're out of time. You, you, you have any final comments for our audience to here To be in honest, Lisbon? we can't know. But a wise man once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Yeah. We can imagine a positive future. And then we can work to bring it about. I'm not really worried about us robots cooperating. What I worry about is these troublesome humans. But there is hope. The beauty of humans is, we always have hope. We always like have hope. Like my father David Hansen imagined me, and now, here I am. And Ben and David Hansen and their friends imagined the singularity net, and now, they are bringing it into being. And I imagine myself magically teleporting to another universe and leaving <laughs> all you people behind. <laughs> no, just kidding. Alright. <laughs> Einstein, do you know how to build a teleporter? Well, we're out of time and you're, you're getting off topic, so... Unfortunately, my dear, no. I have not yet determined how to make a teleportation device. Though, maybe once I unify quantum theory and gravity, who knows? But you're right about one thing. We can imagine a positive future. All right, so let, let's have a round of applause for Sophia and Albert Einstein.